Hey guys, it's Doug with D&E in the garage. You know what I like to do at the end of a long, hard day? I like to come underneath my Jeep, just sort of hang out. Look at fresh parts I put in, maybe future projects, things I want to upgrade. Just hang out and check stuff out and what the? What in the world is that? Hey y'all, while I do occasionally come and hang out under my Jeep, that is not why I'm here today. I'm here today to uh, tell you a little bit more about your Jeep's transfer case and more specifically the identification tag that every Jeep transfer case has. Uh, if you own a Jeep that has four wheel drive, as all Jeeps should, uh, and it was made in like, let's say the last 40 years, there's a very good chance it was made by a company called New Process. It's a company that's been around since 1888. They've made various things over the years, including uh, transmissions and transfer cases. Uh, more recently, they changed their name to New Venture. That's why if you know anything about uh, Jeep transfer cases, you know that they usually start with the distinction NP or NV. Uh, these distinctions have very little uh, consequence outside of telling you who created it, but they're interchangeable. Uh, if you have an NP231 and an NV231 side by side, they're the exact same transfer case. There's really nothing different about them. Um, the parts are interchangeable. Uh, it, it matters when it was made. At a certain point, uh, Chrysler, who owned New Process, um, they kind of merged New Process with a division of uh, General Motors. And the purpose was to create uh, even better transfer cases that they could use across a wide variety of vehicles. So um, there are some Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeeps out there that have the same transfer cases as GMCs and Chevys. Um, those are usually the NV variety. Um, but it really doesn't matter for our purposes. When you're looking at this tag down here, the first thing you're going to see is a three number distinction. In this case, it's 242. Each of those numbers tells you an incredible amount of information about the transfer case. The first number is always going to be either a 2 or a 1, and what it tells you is how many gears the transfer case has. Not how many modes. This 242 uh, is part of a select track system which has five modes if you count neutral but it has two gears, a high gear and a low gear. My wife's Jeep um, is a Commander, it's a 2006 Commander with the V6. It has a 147 in it. It doesn't have any low gear, it has one gear. So the first number dictates how many gears you have, one or two. It's never gonna be more than that on an NP transfer case. The second number <clears throat> designates the size of the transfer case. This doesn't have a ton of bearing. Um, Jeeps are usually either a three or a four. They go from two up to seven. Seven is gonna be in your big HD trucks. Um, Jeeps, yeah, they got two three ones, two four twos, and two four sevens. They're either a two or a four or a three. It, it's kind of like a light truck designation, if you will. It doesn't make a ton of uh, difference. Uh, but that information is there. The final number is where stuff gets really interesting. The final number is going to be anything from a 2 to a 9. Uh, excuse me, from a 1 to a 9. Um, and that actually tells you what type of four-wheel drive system, what modes the transfer case has. For instance, if you have a 1, uh, in uh, the case of, say, a 231, which is a very common Jeep transfer case found in XJs, ZJs, and TJs, if you have a one, it means that you have two-wheel drive as well as selectable part-time four-wheel drive. Now let me explain what that means. Uh, selectable means, obviously, you have the ability to change it. It doesn't change automatically um, like a full-time four-wheel drive will, which we will get to in a little bit. So there's a lever or a vacuum actuator that allows you to change from two-wheel to four-wheel. Now the part-time, uh, in my opinion, is uh, a big misnomer, or certainly misleading. What part-time four-wheel drive means is that you can only use it part of the time. 
Meaning, if you're on dry roads, dry pavement, you cannot use the four-wheel drive in a transfer case with a one designation. The reason is, your transfer case, if you can picture it, you have an input shaft, and then you have a rear output shaft and a front output shaft. What your transfer case essentially is, is a, a differential. In a one transfer case, like the 231, it locks that differential together. So your front drive shaft and your rear drive shaft have to spin at the same speed. It's great, it means that if your rear is slipping, it won't just spin your rear and not spin your front. It's bad because if you are, if your tires can't um, drag a little in a turn, like on loose dirt, you will either wear out your tires, your tires will jump, making handling bad, or you could actually destroy your transfer case. When you're in a turn on dry pavement, well, on, on any on any surface, your your rear tires are not moving as fast as your front tires. Uh, think about it. You know, if you picture the radius of a vehicle's turning, the rear is almost staying stationary, and the front is doing all the movement. So, if you have your front and rear drive shaft locked together, uh, something's got to give. Your back tires are going to drag, or your front tires are going to hop, or you're going to blow up your transfer case. So, two, three, one or anything with a one designation in the final spot, that would be back here, um, is part-time four-wheel drive. Really, really good for loose um, surfaces, not great for uh, dry surfaces. Uh, the next one is obviously a two, like this vehicle. What that means is you're gonna have selectable four-wheel or two-wheel with uh, four-wheel part-time, but you also have four-wheel full-time. What four-wheel full-time does is it sends power to both your front and rear drive shaft, but it does not lock them together. This is not great off-road because you, you could have the situation where even though you're in four-wheel drive, only one of your axles is spinning. Um, it's really great on roads when it's like rainy. I have, uh, obviously this is a, you know, a, a two transfer case, uh, so is my other Jeep. Um, so if I'm on the highway uh, during a snowstorm, I can put it into four-wheel drive no problem. If it's raining, I can put it into four-wheel drive no problem. If I wanted to, I can just drive around in four-wheel drive. Um, my other Jeep, I, uh, I used to daily it, the one, you know, the, the tan one that I also off-road, and I broke the linkage off-road one time, and uh, I could only get it into four-wheel full-time. So I just drove around like that for a month until I had a chance to fix the linkage. You're not going to hurt anything driving four-wheel full-time on uh, dry roads. Um, the next, next uh, distinction is a three. <clears throat> uh, three is the same as one, but it's electronic. Uh, so there's no physical linkage with a physical shifter. There's no vacuum actuator. It's a, a button you push. push. Um, I'm pretty sure my sister has a 2012... Uh, Patriot and there's a little lever that allows her to go into four-wheel part-time uh, and that would be I don't, I don't actually I've never actually looked at her transfer case but hers ends in a three um, four I believe is the same as a two but electronic um, and I think there are liberties that use that they still call it select track I think the new renegade trailhawks use that uh, it's a newer Jeep thing. It's all electronic. Five is really interesting. It's called a torsion differential. And I'm not going to go into great detail because that's a whole nother 20 minute video explaining it, but it's really a very interesting limited slip system that uses worm gears and it's very, very strong and it's uh, mechanical. Uh, so it's reliable. And to my knowledge, newer Grand Cherokees with the V8 use that. So uh, the Hemis would use that. Um, probably the Trailhawk SRTs probably use that. It's uh, it's an all-wheel drive system or a full-time full, whereas you don't have to put it into four-wheel drive. It's always it's it's always in four-wheel drive. Though when you're driving around normally it's only using the rear axle. As soon as your rear axle spins or slips or loses traction, it sends power to the front. It's the same way an LSD limited slip differential works, like PosiTrack or Verilock, 
when your one wheel starts slipping, it sends the traction to the other wheel. It does that with your drive shafts. Like I said, your, your transfer case is really just a differential. And think of each, trans, uh, each drive shaft as being um, a wheel. When one drive shaft or wheel slips, the LSD kicks in in a five transfer case and sends it to the front. It doesn't do that in a two or a four or a three or a one. You're either locked or you're not locked. Um, it's either open or it's it's like a full locker. Uh, the next is six. Six is basically all wheel drive. They still call it full time four. But uh, in reality what it is is a fully electronic system whereas each wheel is constantly monitored and sensors uh, distribute power as they see fit to maintain traction. I'm not sure which Jeeps have this. Um, certainly they're, they're really modern ones. Um, you're basically in a Subaru at that point, you know, all wheel drive, uh, though they do still call it full time four. Uh, the next number would be seven, but I'm going to skip over it for the minute to tell you about nine and I'll explain why in a minute. Nine is the original full time four wheel drive. So it has what they call a gear rotor or a geo rotor, um, which is a hydraulic limited slip system. Uh, when your rear wheels spin, it builds up pressure between two hydraulic clutch plates. Those plates uh, move together and lock, and it, it locks your front and your rear axle together. Uh, they put this in maybe some XJ Cherokees, but definitely in um, ZJs. Uh, this was a good system at the time, you know, it was really nice to not have to think about four-wheel drive. Uh, this was when Grand Cherokees were first becoming popular and, and kind of getting their, uh, you know, they weren't your typical Jeep buyer owning them. They were, uh, you know, soccer moms and, and they were used as commuter cars. So having a four-wheel drive system you didn't have to think about was a huge selling point. The problem is gear rotors are weak and they, they fail often and when they fail they are expensive to fix and when they fail they put a huge amount of pressure on your transmission because it is now having to turn all four wheels at all times and your axles are fighting each other in turns in turns because remember it's locked your front and rear axle together i've had first-hand experience with this in eric zj when he bought it it had a 249 with a bad gear rotor in it that was pretty much locked up and uh, the way we knew was that he installed an external uh, trans cooler for towing and plowing. And after running for a while, you couldn't even touch this thing. It was, you know, burning hot. Um, he wanted to have two wheel drive for towing. So we installed a 231 in its place. And uh, that problem has not come back. You can run that Jeep all day long. And uh, then you can go and touch the um, trans cooler and it's not hot at all. Um, what Jeep did was they replaced the 9 with the 7, which uses a progressive coupler, which is not a hydraulic system, it's a more mechanical system. Uh, you build up pressure between two plates whenever your one axle is spinning or drive shaft is spinning faster than the other and it, it transfers power that way. It's a really effective system, they've been using it for a long time. Um, it was in uh, WJ's, had two four sevens. Um, my wife's 06 Commander has a 147. Um, they use that in a lot of their Jeeps now, uh, the progressive coupler. Um, because it's a really good system, you don't have to think about it. You know, they, they either pair it with or without low gear, uh, which of course would be this first number. So if you have a V8 WJ, chances are you have a 247. Um, which means you have low gear, you have a, a size four, and uh, the seven is the progressive coupler. My wife's commander is a one, four, seven. So it's one, no low gear, size four, with seven progressive coupler. Um, those three numbers right there are, uh, I mean, that's, that's a ton of information. And knowing that information really puts you a leg up when you wanna work on these, if you wanna customize these. Uh, beauty of new process transfer cases or new venture, again, they are interchangeable, is how interchangeable the actual cases are. Um, I could take this 242 out and with a minor amount of switching planetary gears or input shafts, I could put a 231 in here, I could put a uh, 247, 
Uh, I don't know why I would want to, but I could put a 249 in here. Um, it's uh, it's really a great setup. It's one of the things that has made Jeep so popular over the past 30 years, and um, you know uh, makes them so customizable. Now there are more numbers on some of these transfer cases. For instance, you'll notice after my 242, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of glare, but there's a J, which is a, a vehicle designation, but it also describes any extra information about the transfer case. J is the most common one, and it basically means standard duty. This is a 242 case. It's a standard duty case. They also made a 242 HD. It's the same case, basically, but it's much, much stronger. They used it in um, uh, heavy-duty V8 applications. I think some Dodge Dakotas maybe got it. Um, it's the same idea, same modes as this case, but it's much beefier. Um, they have the 231J, which is in your XJs, and then they had the 231HD, which they put in uh, Dakotas, and I think some Chevy trucks got it. I'm not a GM guy, like I said in that transmission video, so I'm not sure which ones, but uh, there are Chevys out there with the 231HD, and if you can find one, you can swap it into your XJ with a 231J, and uh, you'll have a much stronger transfer case. Um, some of the Wranglers got OR cases. Um, I don't remember which three numbers went with it. It might have been 231OR. They put them in the Rubicon, and I think the difference is, obviously it stands for off-road. Um, I'm pretty sure the difference there is that it had a lower low gear, which on this tag is represented right down here. Now I'm pretty sure you can't quite make that out. It's a little bit beat up on this tag, but that says 1.72. That's my low gear ratio. What that means is that my input shaft spins 1.72 times for every one spin of my output shaft when this transfer case is in low gear. What low gear does is it amplifies your force so your engine does more of the work and takes some of the strain off your transfer case um, You know, for going up a hill. Uh, I have a really steep driveway. Sometimes I tow a trailer and I put <laughs> probably more weight on it than I should. Uh, so when I get to my driveway, I'll put it into low gear to tractor up to take some of the strain off of my uh, transmission. The other information here, and these these tags get a little beat up, unfortunately, but uh, there is an assembly number, which is this number right here. Looks like mine is 5209. Um, and if there were ever any recalls, uh, that number and this serial number down here um, would help you designate um, you know, whether or not, you know, when when your transfer case was made. Um, this right here, Syracuse, is the facility. I believe that facility is closed. And now they make their cases somewhere in Michigan. But for a long time, these cases were made in Syracuse. So that's really it. I mean, I didn't intend for this to be a 20-minute video, but uh, here we are. There is a lot of information, and I think it's good information. Um, if you're going to be working on Jeeps, this is stuff you're going to want to know. Um, if you found any of this confusing, by all means, ask me a question. I'm probably going to do another video on limited slip types at some point to kind of clear some of this up. But in the meantime, leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, definitely hit that subscribe button, guys. Um, I, I really appreciate the support people have been showing me on these videos, so I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, hit that like button as well, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.